The following WZIA 3 Sports presentation is brought to you by Copper Creek Contractors. This is the Copper Creek Contractors, your Illini Nation postseason special. March Madness is officially here. Welcome to the Your Alana Nation postseason special. I'm your host, Andy Olson. Brett Barons will join us live from Minneapolis. Coming up, Courtney Lane Brewer is here in studio as well. Reports from both on the way, but we start tonight with our very first look at the Big Ten tournament bracket. 14 Big Ten teams all in one place. Minneapolis all vying for one title. The action already underway in the Twin Cities. Rutgers and Maryland tipping off about an hour ago. Michigan and Penn State will follow. Eight teams will be eliminated from the tourney by the time that Illinois starts things out on Friday before they even take the court. That's the benefit of being the number two seed and not playing until the quarterfinals. The Illini will face the winner of the 7-10 game between Iowa and Ohio State. Of course, they just beat the Hawkeyes in Iowa City on Sunday. After 20 league games, Purdue only loses three to win its second straight outright regular season championship. The Illini finished three games back, followed by Nebraska, Northwest Western and Wisconsin. This is the third time in the last four years Illinois has won at least 14 Big Ten games. Let's go live to Minneapolis where WCIA 3 Sports Director Brett Behrens joins us from the site of the Big Ten Tournament with more on a first time host city. And a greetings here from downtown Minneapolis and this beautiful backdrop behind us as the Twin Cities play host to the Big Ten tournament for the first time in what will be the final time for this tournament as we know it as the four West Coast teams are set to join the league next season. Target Center just down the road from where I'm at here on the banks of the Mississippi River is the sixth different arena in the 26 year history of the event and the home of the Timberwolves and Lynx of the NBA and WNBA. For years the BT went back and forth between Chicago and Indianapolis. Then the conference decided to take its event to Washington, D.C. and New York City. No word on where it will be located next season, but the orange and blue say location does not matter. They are out to win a championship. I feel great. You know, I feel like we're a Final Four championship team, so um, we're going to keep uh, keep building, see where it takes us. I think we're in the best position we could be, you know. God has a plan for everything, and um, the games that we lost, you know, we're not looking back and dwelling on them. Uh, you know, it's winter go home now, and, um, and we're ready to go on a run, so. The Illini last won the Big Ten tournament title in 2021. It will be interesting to see what the crowds look like here in Minneapolis this weekend. The closest Big Ten school other than the Gophers is Wisconsin, and that is about four and a half hours away. Andy? Yeah, Brett, that's what's so nice about having the event in Chicago or India. A lot shorter trip for all the fans, but regardless of how many people are in the stands, the Illini playing good basketball as of late, Brett, and they feel like they have a shot to be playing on Sunday about it. They've won four of five games to end the season and that one loss was to Purdue. They had a second half lead in that game so they feel like they are playing for some momentum and they could see the Boilermakers once again on Sunday if the seeds hold and a lot of people think this could be a really chalky Big Ten tournament. A big reason for the team's success this season has been the offense. It's one of the best in the country. Ranked fourth in Ken Palm and adjusted offensive efficiency. That's the highest it's been since the 2004-2005 final four year when Illinois finished third in the country in that metric with three guys shooting at least 38 percent from three and Terrence Shannon Jr.'s ability to get going in transition along with booty ball for Marcus Domask. The Illini have multiple threats to score that should keep them in games in the postseason. You don't see a lot of teams playing booty ball um, you know and as I watched a lot of these games here in the last couple days I think that's unique uh, so We'll see, uh, you know, but uh, I'm excited about it because we, you know, we're I think we're third or fourth in the country today in, in offense. So uh, it's nice to have guys who can make baskets and do it in a lot of ways. The offense has been great. The defense, a different story, ranked 73rd nationally. Ken Palm had them in the 100s just a few weeks ago, but a couple of strong defensive performances here to end the season helped that number significantly. They held Purdue to 77 and in a game at Iowa to close out the regular season, the Hawkeyes held to just 61 points. 
Andy, much more to come here from Minneapolis. Just 48 hours from right now, the Illini will be on the court. I am looking forward to it. All right, Brett, can't wait to hear from you more later. The All Big Ten first team goes to six this year. Zach Eady and Boo Booey, unanimous selections by the coaches and media. Tarrant Shannon Jr. and Braden Smith, also first teamers. But there was a split on Marcus Damask and Jameer Young. Damask gets the coaches nod, Young the media. This is the just the ninth time in program history and third since 2006. The Illini have had two first team players in the same year. Damask is second team media while Coleman Hawkins gets a third team nod. No surprise, Edie, the player of the year, just the fourth player in conference history to win the award in back to back seasons. Matt Painter and Fred Hoiberg win co coach of the year honors, while Penn State's ace Baldwin Jr. is named the defensive player of the year. All right, time for our first time out here on the Carolina Nation postseason special, but we've got a lot more to come as we chat with bracketologist Brad Evans about where the Illini stand heading into Selection Sunday and what they have to gain in Minneapolis. Plus, it's been a fantastic season for Terrence Shannon Jr. on the court, but a rape charge in Kansas landed him in court back in December. It's been months since we've heard from the senior how that might change this week. The Your Illini Nation postseason special rolls on from Minneapolis, where we could hear from Terrence Shannon Jr. for the first time since December. The Illini senior has not been made available to the media since then, after he was charged with a felony rape case in Kansas following an incident during the Illinois football game back in September. Unlike the regular season, the Big Ten and NCAA tournaments have open locker room policies. We'll see if Shannon is in that locker room come game time for the Illini and following the game. The charge comes from that alleged incident on September 9th at a bar in Lawrence, Kansas. Shannon was in town to watch that Illini football team play the Jayhawks. Authorities were looking into what happened for months, but no formal proceedings happened until December. That's when the projected All-American was issued a warrant for his arrest then suspended from all team activities, missing six games. After filing a civil suit against the university, Shannon's suspension was lifted after he got a preliminary injunction on January 19th, allowing him to return as a full participant on the court. The Illini's leading scorer has heard it all from opposing fans since getting back in the lineup and on the court. His teammates say he has handled it all in stride. It was easy to tell. It, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't easy for him to just get right back out there and make an impact right away. He kind of had to ease into it, but I, I think he's done a pretty good job getting back out there and, and playing at his pace and uh, doing the things he does well, which is getting out in transition, bringing speed uh, and defensive intensity. Shannon's next court date in Kansas in his criminal case is scheduled for May 10th. Shannon's 21.6 points per game, a big reason why the Illini are a projected four seed in next week's NCAA tournament. This is a look at their team sheet, a key tool the selection committee uses when deciding where to slot teams. And as Andy shows us, you've got a guy who knows all about where the Illini might land in next week's NCAA tournament with bracketologist Brad Evans. All right, Brett, thanks so much. Back here in the studio, happy to be joined now by Brad Evans from Live on the Line and TheGamingJuice.com, where he gives out picks daily. We will get to your picks in just a minute, Brad, for the Big Ten tournament. But I want to start with you as we're talking about March Madness, everything coming up here for the Illini and the Big Ten. Overall in the conference, who's got the most to gain and most to lose this coming week? Well, Merry March Madness, my friend. It's the greatest time of the year. I will say this. A couple of teams that have the most to gain play each other in their opening round matchup, Ohio State and Iowa. I have them right now firmly on the bubble. Most to lose, really, I think it's those two teams, and, and maybe Michigan State as well, a team that if they do wind up on the wrong side of the ledger against uh, the hosts, essentially, the Minnesota Golden Gophers, Woo! It's going to be a sweat session on Selection Sunday. Better have the Old Spice ready there, Tom Izzo. You may need to layer up. All right, let's focus on the Alana. Right now, it seems like they are a consensus number four seed. All these outlets are predicting the NCAA tournament. Do you see them solidly as a four? I have Illinois as the highest number four seed. So obviously there's some movement there. There is a very, very, very slim chance they could sneak in to a back end number two seed if everything breaks right. I think when um, you know everything settles dust wise, you're looking at probably 
a back end number three seed. They're going to be solidified as a four. I doubt they're going to slip to a number five. Let's take a look at your Big Ten tournament bracket now as we oh, start to yeah, break this do thing down. I want to know starting out. Who do you think could be the surprise team of the Big Ten tournament this year in the next couple days? All right, well, I, I guess a surprise team of sorts because I got them win a couple games, Maryland. This is honestly a straight Wisconsin fade. Uh, the Badgers have been so bad. They're north of number 300 EFG offense, north of number 300 in the country EFG defense over the last four weeks. They're going to be bounced in round one. They're going to be bounced in their opening round game of the Big Ten tournament as well. In the semifinals, you have it looking pretty chalk. Illinois, Purdue, Nebraska, and Northwestern moving on, leading to a Purdue-Illinois uh, final. Uh, what do you make of this matchup, Brad? Oh, part three, right? It's so hard to beat a team in the same season three times. And Illinois has been right there at the threshold of knocking off Purdue. I think the third time is going to be the charm for Illinois. Uh, they're going to have to have some things break their way, but oh, look at that. It's beautiful side. I-L-L. Unbiased opinion here, folks. I think the orange and blue cut down the nets in Minneapolis and maybe ultimately secure the three seed, or dare I say, if other teams lose out in front of them, everything breaks perfectly for them, maybe even sneak in a two C come selection Sunday. All right, Brad, thanks so much to watch my full conversation with Brad breaking down the Illini. You can visit our website, your Thanks to Brad for stopping in to talk to the Illini. We'll hear from Illini inquirers Derek Piper coming up, but first Coleman, he's one of one. Courtney Lane Brewer joins us in studio with more on Coleman Hawkins journey. The only player on the roster who has been with the program for all four years. The Copper Creek Contractors, your Align Nine Nation postseason special continues now. The transfer portal has been a key piece to Illinois basketball's success the past few years. The Illini could field an entire starting lineup on this year's team of guys who did not start their career in Champaign. Four of the top five scorers are transfers as well. WCIA 3's Brett Barons rejoins us live from Minneapolis, where Dane Danger, the Big Ten tournament, is an opportunity for him to go back home, Brett. Yeah, a homecoming for Dane. He grew up in Brooklyn Park, a suburb just outside of downtown Minneapolis. Here was a four star recruit elected to go to Baylor. The Bears won a national title his freshman season. He redshirted and then elected to come up to Champaign and join the Illini. He is one of several transfers on this Illini team that have helped them get to where they are at today. Of course, the Illini have lost multiple players to the portal as well. That's the new norm in college hoops these days, but this team wouldn't be anywhere close to where it is today without guys like Terrence Shannon Jr., Quincy Guerrier, and Marcus Domask. Along with Dane, those guys choosing to come to Champaign. A staggering 66% of the team's points this season have come from transfers. Our team has, has benefited from the transfers. You know, we got, we got a, a decent amount on our team, and you know, I think Coach has done a really good job evaluating through the portal and finding the guys that he wants and the guys that fits his program. You know, there's a lot of people that kind of doubt it. If people can make that, that transition in one year and have success like that. So, yeah, I, th I think for me to just kind of show that it's possible and, you know, like you put in the work, the, the work's going to show. There will be even more transfers on the way next season. The Atlanta have six seniors and only a three-man recruiting class as of now. I know a lot of people, not a fan of the transfer portal, but it has certainly been fruitful for the Illini. And Andy and Courtney, it also makes guys like Coleman Hawkins that much more rare. Four years in Champaign, he's become a fan favorite. If people kind of been able to root for him a little bit more because they've gotten to know him. Yeah, Brett Coleman certainly has been uh, one of those fan favorites. The lone four year player has been with the Alana his entire career, Courtney. That's right. His journey is unlike any of his teammates from testing the NBA draft waters last year to deciding to return to Champaign for a fourth season. And he's quite the personality both on the court and online. Coleman, he's one of one on and off the court. Coleman Hawkins has made quite the impact in his four seasons with the Illini. 
And while the stat line shows 13 points a game this year with 28 blocks and 46 steals total, fans have often seen Hawkins in their Twitter feeds after a big game. So does Coleman have the best Twitter game? Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's just like interacting with everybody on Twitter and that's just funny to me. In a now infamous TikTok posted after the Maryland game, Hawkins was seen celebrating the win in a Maryland t-shirt he pocketed from the school's giveaway that night, which didn't exactly sit well with Terp fans. Then, after getting a technical in the loss at Michigan State, the California native wanted to make sure fans and foes alike didn't think that that was who he was. I, I always seem to get, you know, a, a negative look uh, on social media, uh, so I don't want people to think uh, it was anything negative that I said. Um, I'm not a negative person, I'm a positive person, um, and people keep trying to say a reputation thing. If, if a referee could sit down and have a lunch with me, I guarantee you he'd, I'd be one of the coolest guys he could talk to. Hawkins doesn't shy away from interacting with fans, hyping up his teammates, and sharing his thoughts on other sports on his Twitter page. But after a rough game at Penn State, he had to make a change. I had to delete some apps. Um, <clears throat> Just get off social media, just try to limit who I talk to, you know, not making ex excuses for myself and just be a man, really. Uh, just man up and, and on to the next. Coleman's one of the most misread people in, in the country. And, you know, his, he's demonstrative and he's, but it's all in the name of competitive. I mean, he, there's no, I may not have coached many guys with a greater competitive spirit than him. And whatever changes he made paid off. <laughs> scoring a career-high 30 points in the very next game against Iowa. He hasn't shared or even liked a tweet since before that Penn State game, but continues to be a top performer and a fan favorite. Yeah, I think they just like my personality, like things I say on social media, and like how I've always just like been ride or die for Illinois. After four years in orange and blue, Hawkins has grown as any college student does. A path head coach Brad Underwood hopes others can draw from. Coleman's basketball journey is, has been probably the epitome of what it, it should be for a college student athlete, just the growth and the development on and off. And uh, I think Coleman's uh, development has just been one I would like more people to have to go through. It's what they should have to go through. It's what young boys go through when they become a man. It's been a career of growth for Coleman Hawkins from this blonde baby faced kid to a guy with a triple double under his belt. His freshman year on the Big Ten tournament team, he averaged 1.4 points and shot 23% from three. And what a difference now. This season, he's up to 12.9 points a game, 6.1 rebounds, and has brought that percentage beyond the arc up to nearly 40%. Nate, thanks so much. Coleman has certainly left an imprint on the program. After one final break, we're back with our guy Derek Piper breaking down his Big Ten tournament bracket and how the Illini plan to make a deep postseason run. to the Your Alana Nation postseason special. So happy to be joined now by Alana Inquirer's Derek Piper. He's joined us all season on the pregame show. It has been a long, fun season, Derek. But now looking ahead to the postseason, Illinois coming off that win against Iowa. A uh, good defensive performance, probably one of their best of the season. Perfect time for it, it seems like, as they go into winner go home territory. Yeah, absolutely. I know that's what Brad Underwood has really been preaching here recently is trying to get that defensive effort and engagement really amplified because we know this team can score at a high clip. They're one of the top five offenses in the country. They got a bona fide big three, but defensively, you got to be able to get stops, especially late in games. And you look at the way they were able to buckle down against the Hawkeyes to get a quad one win. And hopefully if the defense pairs with the offense, this has a chance to be a high ceiling team and one that will be tough to knock out come tournament time. They know that from experience these past two years that it just takes one game and you're out of this Big Ten tournament and do you think they're primed for maybe a deeper run than these past few seasons? I think that they are. We'll see what the feeling is after they get out of Minneapolis. If it's a one and done there, then maybe you get back to the angst of, there's going to be angst. I mean, the fans oh, are worried about this being another year where they don't advance to that second weekend. There's going to be a lot of roster turnover this season. I like the way they're shaping up going into postseason play. But of course, knowing that it can be a possession here, possession there, a missed rebound here, uh, and just some mistakes that 
over the course of a game can really be the difference of advancing or getting sent home. And I do think that Brad's emphasis of that should have this team's attention. We'll see what that looks like starting this week in Minneapolis. I want to get first your thoughts on Illinois side of the bracket. Like I've said plenty of times, like people have pointed out just one team that they have lost to all season on their side. Number 11 Penn State. What do you make about their path to a possible Sunday championship game in the Big Ten tournament? I think overall it's pretty favorable. Now I do think that that first matchup there, whether you're going to draw Ohio State or Iowa, you'll get a desperate team, a team with yeah, that's a battle of Bubbleville right there. Yeah. When you, I do have Illinois moving on against Ohio State and then matching up against Indiana here in the semis. All right, let's move on to the championship now. Just like Brad and like just like a lot of people, you got Illinois and Purdue in that final, but is third times the charm for the Illini? I think it could be, but I'm picking the Boilermakers. I, I just think they're that much of a machine. I think that Zach Eady is an extremely tough matchup. We saw the guard play that... Purdue has really had this year is different than last season. Braden Smith is an entirely different presence with his confidence, with his aggressiveness, the way he was able to make shots late against the Illini. I'm sure Illinois would be chomping at the bit to, to get that shot at the Boilers once again, but uh, I do have that matchup and, and them getting their chance, but uh, I'll roll with Purdue, the team that's the top overall seed right now projected in the NCAA tournament, and I, I think they get it done in Minneapolis. You're not going to have a lot of Illini fans very happy with you for that pick. That's okay. I, I, I get used to that. All right, my entire conversation with Derek is available to watch on YourIlliniNation.com. You can also watch him on the Your Illini Nation pregame show. We've been live before every game this season, courtside, getting you ready for tip-off. And that will continue this week in Minneapolis. Watch on our WCIA3 digital channels, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. All right, that's going to do it for us tonight on the Your Illini Nation postseason special. For Brett Behrens, Courtney Lane Brewer, Brad Evans, and Derek Piper, I'm Andy Olson. Good night and enjoy the Big Ten Tournament. This has been the Copper Creek Contractors Your Illini Nation postseason special. Brought to you by Copper Creek Contractors.